<laughs> well, with that in mind, listen. We're going to close with a real good topic here because, you know, we, we, we want, with some of the organizations, yes, we want people to attend the shows, but we also want people buying the season passes, don't we? We also want Latinos that can, you know, maybe be a part of a board, maybe make some contributions there. That's going to be important, but we have to be candid. You know, we want, we want people to attend, but we also want to know, does that community have, the substantial part of that community have some people that we can count on once they fall in love with what we're doing or our product or our high-end product, as Wandy was saying. You know, you've got to have, you've got to, you have to be a fluid. Or is there a fluent Latino market? And that's our final presentation today. That's what we're going to talk about. I think it's important. You know, we're really moving uh, in great time here. I, I was thinking about you. Know, we had some online questions, I think, which is very important. And, and some of these communities, you know, a lot of them aren't online yet. But thanks to some of our other things that we're doing through outreach, I think, for instance, Comcast had, now has this great program called Inter Internet Essentials 995 to get online. You know, we're pushing that. We're, we want to work with That's a great program. That's a program that takes into to consideration that you, you have to be online now, really. You have to be there to, for us to be able just, just to have your knowledge of anything. And so thanks to Comcast, that program's out there. We're going to be doing more about that as we move together in our, in our collaboration. But here to talk about upscale in the flu of Hispanic markets is our award-winning <laughs> Presenter, Rico Vallejos. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, this, I want to get going quickly here. I know I'm, at least I'm not standing between you and lunch being served here. So, <laughs> exactly. you know, I'm too hungry, grow, grab some, whatever else you better. And uh, let's see, here we go. I want to start with three quick myths about, uh, oh, maybe this is not a market for us. In fact, I've heard in doing Hispanic marketing most of all my career, really, and uh, to different degrees, Hispanic and other multicultural and international, but always a component of Hispanic, people would say, oh no, we have an upscale uh, product, so that, that's why we don't have, we don't need Hispanic marketing. And uh, here we go, we're going to move quickly through this. You'll miss half the Latinx, which means, Latinx means Latinos, Latinas, everybody. Upscale and affluent market. Myth number two, the millennials. Well, you know, they don't have money. When you're young, you're not making that much money. Hopefully, if you're 27, you hope that by the time you're 40, you're going to make a lot of money than when you're 27, right? And, uh, and if you're 40 or more, you remember, I mean, you know, it's not always that you have that much money. You also will be missing half the affluent and the upscale markets. So, and uh, the number three one, a quick one, uh, oh yeah, they're all, all the, all of them, even some people say millennials are mostly uh, US born. And the truth is that they're almost half are foreign born. Now, as far as the foreign born, they are what I call generation 1.5, uh, because I am first generation. I grew up somewhere else. I grew up in Argentina, also Buenos Aires. And uh, now I, uh, I live here, so I'm first generation, uh, because I was born somewhere else. And, um, uh, my daughters, I have two daughters, they were born in Minnesota, and uh, they are second generation Latinas. There are many who were born somewhere else, and they come, and so the, the Dreamers, for example, the Taka kids, they were born somewhere else, and they came as young people. Generation 1.5 is what uh, we call in Hispanic marketing uh, people who came usually around before age 10, before middle school, so they did middle school, high school, college in the U.S. in English, by the time they're early adults, they are English dominant, their Spanish is not educated, they speak fluently, no accent, they don't have an accent in either language, but they don't um, have a handle on the language because they were never educated in the language, they were educated in English. So that is kind of the, the situation with this 46%. And dual culture, ambiculture, that's a thing I want to mention a few times, there will be a few words that uh, you haven't heard before that uh, people are using in the community. Couple of facts. Well, we're talking about Hispanic affluent households. Uh, by the way, the definitions, it's not my definition, but what the industry has been using. So affluent means household income of 100,000 or more a year, and upscale between 50 and 99, or 50 and 100 uh, a year, the household income. So these are 
huge numbers. You know, by the way, if you look at multicultural, multicultural accounts for most of the growth in upscale and affluent uh, markets in the U.S. today, and Latinos a good share of that multicultural growth. In fact, they're the majority. So, in terms of growth, Latinos. Uh, are younger, as you know, and this is partly why sometimes you say the average Latino family makes so much money. Well, the average Latino family is 27. The average non-Latino white, uh, non-Hispanic white uh, family uh, or person is 42. So there's a huge difference. Imagine you're 42, you're 27. What do you think? You know, uh, you have, you are um, a lot younger, and so you do have um, uh, less, usually education, less income, and all that. However, the um, uh, many companies are now really paying attention to lifetime customer value. And that is, you look at the, for the course, the rest of their lives, if you take a customer and keep the customer, um, they're seeing that the Asian, the Asian market and the Hispanic market provide a much greater customer, uh, lifetime customer value than Latinos. And, uh, and by the way, Latinos lead, and the Latino millennials, what I call the bilennials, bicultural millennial Latinos, they lead the nation in, uh, the wrong button. Uh, they lead the nation in household formation. For the real estate industry, this is huge, and I want to have a lot, I could just do the, this presentation all on real estate, actually, because I've done some work in that area, and it's just a huge. Uh, so, talking about household formation, this is what we have today, but this is actually a year, or uh, came out in 2017, 2016 numbers, uh, 2.5 million households headed by Latins ages 25 to 44 with incomes. This is a different number, but again, this is this would be filled with mostly fall within the upscale market and starting the affluent. You Hispanic, all kinds of organizations are doing great, great work, and uh, you'll see uh, me quote the sources. Uh, those are great people to follow, by the way. Oh, by the way, go to Facebook like the Rico Latino page, <laughs> go to Twitter, follow Rico Latino. Uh, I, you will see a lot of these things and updates and everything because I post a lot of new research, new findings, interesting facts and insights on the end of culture. So uh, that's what you will find uh, on, on, on my Facebook page and my uh, Twitter feed. Email me anytime. I love this conversation to continue, not just now. And not only one way, you know, we'll have a little time for questions, but uh, this is uh, my, my website. So, moving on, um, education is a huge trend. There is an explosion of Latinos between 2005 and 2015, those numbers are out, an explosion of Latino college enrollment and Latino college graduation rates. And that is continue to grow. Uh, these are uh, um, a difference between Hispanic parents and non-Hispanic parents, non-Hispanic white. And 95% uh, of Hispanic parents versus 78% of non-Hispanic white parents say college is very important for my child. And again, this is even a bigger difference in attitude, 79 versus 61. I have a lot of influence over my child's education. This could be wishful thinking, you know, we, we, we alluded before that to the fact that when you do Asian marketing, you do Hispanic marketing, you do much more aspirational marketing. And this may feel like an aspiration, aspiration more than fact, but the facts are there in front of us. This is the growth on 529, 529 accounts, the growth of college savings accounts. This is financial services facts. Between 2012 and 2017, 100% of that growth is Latinos saving for college for their kids. So not the whole volume, but the growth between in these five years. So the numbers are huge, and Latinos are getting educated. They're moving on, and uh, uh, they are the, the future upscale market and affluent markets. So entrepreneurship is a thing that is fueling this hugely. Partly, uh, it's been always fueled by a real or perceived glass ceiling, and, and uh, uh, sometimes lack of formal education. There are many reasons why Latinos are always much more likely to uh, become entrepreneurs, to start businesses, and uh, this is actually part of the immigrant experience. Immigrants are always, uh, always start businesses at a higher rate than people who were born in whatever place, and this is all over the world, you know. 
and uh, immigrants uh, share similar traits no matter where you go in the world. North Africa is in France, Turks in Germany, Filipinos in Japan, no matter where you go, Mexicans in the US, uh, Bolivians in Argentina. You know, you, you have people going from one country to a, one poor country to a rich country, and there's a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of uh, uh, sometimes survival. But look at this. Latino business owners are three times more likely to have high incomes, what I would consider affluent incomes, 150 plus, uh, 150K plus a uh, year household. And uh, <coughs> Latino business owners are definitely one of your targets. You want to target people. If you, look, if you have an upscale product, if you're into luxury brands, this is uh, definitely needs to be in your, in your uh, portfolio of targets. They're growing a lot faster, Latino businesses, they've grown a lot in the last decade, and there is a special segment of Lati the Latino market that we will see. Here is a slide, I, I, by the way, Carlos Santiago says hi, Rick. I yeah. talked to him yesterday, okay. and uh, yeah, he called with a question about Mexico. Santiago Solutions Group, he's one of our award winners, he's one of the, our esteemed friends, yeah. and uh, he's uh, the head, the founder of Santiago Solutions Group, one of the most respected and solid uh, Hispanic marketing consultancies and research and, uh, in, the, in the country. So they, by the way, follow them. All these things you see here, you follow these people because they come, they put out all this information all the time. They're doing research. This is part of what their 2018 um, multicultural. And just one thing here, this is, uh, I, I was lazy to just copied his thing, but I want you to see the, you know, this is what the PDF you can download on their site looks like. 100% of all new upscale and 36% of new affluent households in the US have been multicultural segments. So, Hispanic plus others. Huge. Again, luxury brands, stop paying attention to that. He likes to do these infographics like, full of information. Just two things, two times. Affluent households, compared to white, non-Hispanic households, Hispanics are growing two times the rate. African Americans, 1.4 times, Asians, or other 1.7 times, faster. So, here's the numbers, upscale, 3.9%, and uh, this is the growth uh, between 2010 and 2016, the growth rate. The white non-Hispanic, minus 0.3%, it shrunk a little bit, the upscale market there. The affluent grew 4.6%. These are the growth rates of the Latino market, the highest in all of these, across all of these uh, uh, demographics. So, moving on with another one, Geoscape. This is Cesar, our friend Cesar, right? Cesar. Cesar. Geoscape. Say Caesar. Cesar. Yeah. Cesar. <laughs> Cesar. So Cesar, Geos Geoscape is a great company. Now it's part of Claritas. This is brand, you know, this is last, last month. Just a few weeks ago, they were bought by Claritas. Huge uh, conglomerate and market research and insights for marketers. We use that, my clients use various tools, Geoscape and Claritas. So I'm going to show some of the, what, uh, what they have in terms of what we're looking at. Increase in affluence. Between 2001 and, and 2017, Latino, the Latino um, affluent market, you know, 100,000 plus, grew over 300% as opposed to 137% for non-Hispanics. Non Next five years, 23% projected growth versus 12%. So this is a trend that has been happening. We can track it back and we can move forward and see. Geoscape has this, and this, the reason I'm showing this, uh, they have Hispanicity codes. They also have Asianicity and others. HA12, this is, the, and they put a name to it one. Americanizado, Nueva Latina, Ambi, Cultural, Hispano, Latinoamericana. These things don't really apply as much, but when you look at the upscale and affluent Latino markets, you will see people that meet most of these conditions. Now, there is a little bit that doesn't apply. This is educated, this is, there are people who come from Latin America, some of them don't speak English, but they're not migrant laborers, they're wealthy. The soccer, everybody loves soccer, so that applies to everybody. A uh, lot of internet use, so this is not exactly you know, a rule, but you will find that some people say, well, where do I find the, the upscale? Are they here, HIA2? It's like, no, you can find them all across, depending on what the situation is, because one niche, one segment in the affluent market is wealthy Latin Americans coming and buying property, buying houses, buying land, buying commercial property in the US. And uh, we'll see a little bit of that. If you happen to use Prism, 
Claritas uh, clustering um, and targeting uh, software and, and numbers, I identified for you the five clusters where you would find, you're more likely to find the uh, wealthy Latinos, upscale and affluent Latinos. <coughs> See, they put all of us, I think all of us are somewhere here. They put us all, <laughs> they have all this information about us. And, uh, and so they know, okay, what are, you, what are you likely to drive? How much money you're making? What your lifestyle is? What your values, what your education is? What kind of job, professional, blue collar, gray collar, whatever. So, but these are the five segments. This is just a curiosity, I guess, if you don't use it. This is a very current, and this is everybody, the whole country. If you divide the country based on household income by quintiles, you have the lowest 20%, the top 20%, the middle quintiles. We're looking at this somehow. Uh, this is what we're looking at right now. Where? Okay, those are the people who are there who happen to be Hispanic or whatever market you're targeting. You're targeting wealthy Asians. Where are they? How can I find them? So for Latinos, and that's the first question, where are they and how do I reach them? How do I find them? The answer is get involved in the community. And that's it. That could, that could end the presentation. I have another 100 slides, but this is it. So how do we get involved in the community? How do we connect with people? Yes, you can put ads, and you can buy things on Facebook and social media, and we'll move on a little bit of that. Get to know the Chambers of Commerce. Sadly, we don't have a functioning Chamber of Commerce in Minnesota today. We had before. And so, but depending on, again, what you do, if it is, if you, what you do is national. This is an organization you want to hang out with. You will meet a lot of your target, your prospects, but also you'll just be involved in the community. I think you, this message resonated throughout the morning. You want to reach X market, get involved with the market. Show up, show that you care, and, uh, and be present. Get to know us, be our friends. The US Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, they highlight you know, business people, uh, members. The conference is coming up in Philadelphia this year. I would say go there if you're serious about if it's national what you're doing and you want to connect with business owners. Remember, a Latino business owner is many more times more likely to be affluent and upscale than other Latinos who are not business owners. So, SLAY is a wonderful organization. They do research. Is this, they're working out of uh, Stanford University. And uh, again, visit their site if you want to understand more the issues affecting Latino businesses. They do great work. They publish great things. You can download these PDFs from their website. And, uh, but they are really uh, doing so much good work helping Latino businesses. Look at this, this is, for, this is the, the latest, the, not the early part of the, the new century. A little more recent, the numbers that are out. Latino, by far, the number one uh, uh, group that shows growth in the entrepreneurship. Uh, and within Latinos, Latinas. Latinas are really the, 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 the market to look for if you are want to target entrepreneurs and uh, small business people. So, a lot of numbers here. I don't want you to, I don't want you to, to catch a number just to get the idea. Look at this. This is Latino entrepreneur profiles. Zero to 99 in, uh, in um, revenue. This is our sweet spot. We're looking for a minority within a minority. You want, you know, this is a million plus. These are nice businesses. They are what, what's called um, a more mature business. 100,000 to a million, this is where we have. So depending on what these numbers are, but the revenue, this is where we are we're looking for Latinos there. If you have something that is, you know, you're selling very expensive yachts and uh, homes and uh, anything upscale. By the way, talking about upscale, uh, the, the comments on the Asian community apply to Latinos. Not as much, but quite a bit in terms of aspirational marketing and showing, the, the showing that you made it. I'm going to drive that card because I deserve it and because I'm showing that I made it. And uh, um, well, I can tell you stories about the videos that uh, many people, Latin Amer Latins in the US, send to Latin America. It, it used to be, back in the 90s, it used to be a DVD. Now they put it online. 
But it's basically, if you have, your daughter has a quinceañera, 15-year birthday party, you get engaged, you get married. What you send back home often looks like a telenovela. It's a beautiful production with music, with everything. And of course, the girl or the couple are the stars of this telenovela. So the family back home looks at that, wow, look at that, this is better than La Reina del Sur, you know, this is a great production, they made it, you know. And so, these guys, okay, this is the goal, look at this. This is, this points to the fact that the Latino affluent market and the upscale market is going to really continue to explode in many ways. Uh, Latino businesses, the, there's a group called the Latino uh, Action. But some people said, okay, all this research, let's do action. One of the professors from Stanford began this nonprofit, and they are really focusing on scaling. We want to scale your company. You're making it under a million dollars, you need to go beyond the, the million. If you're making a million dollars, or raised 500,000 of external funding, apply, click apply now, and we're going to help you succeed. So, another organization, changing, changing subjects here, Prospanica, it used to be Nashimba, the Hispanic MBAs, another organization that is good to follow. And these are just examples, but they are some of the main ones. And they happen to have a nice Minnesota, Minneapolis St. Paul chapter. So here you will find some of your prospects, because many people here uh, make uh, you know, uh, a very nice six-figure incomes being, being a high level, uh, prof young and professionals in electronic, 3M, uh, I know many of them, Target, Cargill, General Mills. So, uh, Prospanica, guess what? The conference is in Milwaukee this year, <coughs> September. So, consider going, consider engaging them, become a member, support them, go, go to their parties, and uh, there we go. If you were to see this page, if you refresh the page, this message changes. These are the people, Delta, and many other brands seeking to reach Prospanica members, Prospanica people who are interested in Prospanica. So it's a population that you can reach hugely digital, by the way. So Hispanic executive, this is more of a magazine, but there you go. Top of, these are the uh, top leaders, then we'll see little Latinas, then we'll see the rest of the boardroom. This is kind of a who is who, and this is, these lists come out regularly, get to know these people, follow them, see what they're about. These are the people you want to follow on Twitter to get to know, to meet them when you go to some conference. And uh, these are successful people uh, in, in, in the Latino world, uh, in the US. So, NAREP, this is something I love. NAREP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. They have so many great programs. They represent, 30, they have 30, uh, over 30,000 members. 58 chapters, we don't have a chapter here yet, but maybe we will. So, and uh, it's all about the American dream. Many of those agents are in your target market, but also their customers. Not all of them, not, not, the, not necessarily the first time home buyers, but uh, uh, NAREP is a wonderful organization, and one thing I, they have that I love are the 10 disciplines. They have them in English, in Spanish. This is, again, their main goal is the Hispanic Wealth Project. They want Latinos to build wealth. What is the main form of building wealth? If you don't have a property, that's the number one. Buy your own home, buy your own flat, your own condo, whatever it is, but then keep, uh, you know, focus on assets, not so much on income, assets, wealth. And so this is what these uh, people are all about. And the, the 10 disciplines, everything is there, from being generous with people who are less fortunate than we are, to keeping in good physical shape, to be, being savvy, politically savvy, all right? Uh, of course, financially. So these are great, great um, principles. You know, here's our friend, Henry Cisneros. Henry. He's a good friend. He spoke at this event here with Rick Aguilar, he's a friend of Rick's. And uh, he supports and he's part of the uh, NAREP 10, the Hispanic Wealth Project. This initiative, and this is not the only one, there are many initiatives like this around the country helping, pushing the Latino community to become, to, uh, to, to, get, to get to the wealth that, that the community deserves based on the hard work they put. So the ecosystem, this is the, the, what they describe the ecosystem. Employment, that brings income. With income, you can save, you, can, you have access to credit, and you get to own a home, buy property. This, the, once you have this, this technically allows you 
to, to start businesses because you have some cash flow, you have a good credit, you know, you have assets, and then you create employment, and you'll see a, we'll see a little bit of that later. So this is the, the uh, cycle that uh, and people, the people at NAREP and the Hispanic Wealth Project and Vision, this is one way. We want to create uh, wealth in, in the community. They publish also the top 250 real estate agents, loan originators, and you can look at those lists. Guess what? Each one of those could be your prospect. Don't tell them I say that, but <laughs> you know, but you, you see who the leaders are in many ways. They're all over the country, by the way, even Minneapolis. And uh, so these are the ages of the people who uh, won this award in 2017, the new one. You know, uh, the, the bulk are 35 to 50, but then you have boomers, millennials, you have 1% of the silent generation. And um, we even have some people in Minnesota who are listed on this NAREP 250. You go to the NAREP, web NAREP, NAREP website, you can download all these PDFs. This is really information that is easily available to us. This is Patti Ariello, Ari, um, Arbiello, I have to write it down so I remember. Patti is a great supporter of NAREP, is involved with NAREP. She, is a, she, she owns with her husband a company that, uh, again, very much uh, supporting uh, all this and teaching this. They want to increase wealth through home ownership by supplying financing. Her company is a, a mortgage <coughs> company. And uh, they have these incredible activities and training. They have a school. Hispanial, there's another word for you. If you don't like to say bilennial, you can say Hispanial, Hispanic millennials. <laughs> I, I only saw them use it. I didn't see anybody else use it, but you know, <laughs> everybody's inventing words. They are doing so much training. And that's happening all over the country. There is a party again. They, uh, they really are uh, creating a huge uh, movement. There are now hundreds of, you know, more and more Latino Asians. Now I'm glad that we're doing this in Minnesota. Multicultural Asians, multicultural loan origin, no, mortgage people, and everybody, everybody in that industry, we're getting, we're hiring minorities and, and diversity. So. Uh, the company, the company is called New American Fund Funding. HIP. Become aware of HIP. Get to know the players. Join Hispanic in Philanthropy. You can join the organization. There is a gala coming up in San Francisco in April. You, know, you don't have a lot of time to sign up for that. And uh, these are some of the people that you would meet when you go and uh, and uh, connect. Come to Connect, stay to celebrate. This is uh, the Hispanics in Philanthropy are a, are a group that have national, national scope. And uh, you, by learning what are the issues that Latino affluent people care about, Latino upscale people give to, you'll understand what their values are. And you can really get, and, and, you know, understanding the culture is as much part of the game, you know, learning, keeping learning. I like the question uh, before about you change, you have to change the product. Product, de product development, I always saw as part of marketing. Marketing, multicultural marketing, always uncovers new uses for existing products, uh, ideas and concepts for product development, because the market needs uh, this product you know, or this service in a different way, a completely new one that didn't exist, or tweaking, tweaking until we got a version B or version a or whatever of a product. So, uh, in this case, it's all about getting to know. Once you get to know, lights begin to you know you begin to hear people. Why people give to this cause? Again, Latino charitable donors on the rise. This is a huge movement. Finally, and uh, follow famous people. You know these these famous actors and famous singers: Gloria Stefan, Emilio Stefan, Ricky Martin. Isabel Allende, all of these are major donors. Some of them have their own foundations. See, they have a lot of followers too. See what they care about. What, where do they give and why in the Latino community? And that will, that will inform you and educate you on Latino issues, what the, what the issues that, that they care about. And uh, typically you will get in their circle of influence. You get to know them when you do that. So. And uh, giving circles all over the country, in California, this is in Colorado, 
uh, Latino, not necessarily wealthy yet, but many of, many of the people, many of the people involved in these given circles are upscale and affluent, although not everybody. But the whole concept, the culture of of philanthropy, is uh, uh, taking root in the Latino community. This is even here in town. The St. Paul Foundation has El Fondo de Nuestra Comunidad, Latinos. So, uh, some opportunities, business owners, we kind of saw this, but I love this very recent research, 2018 by Bank of America, and the spotlight. This is basically saying <coughs> how much they're growing, how positive they are about the economy, how positive about they are the national and local economy. They are positive about increasing revenue, about hiring people, about developing their own people. And uh, almost, you know, 80, over 80% 80%. Uh, we need to attract and retain and grow. The employment is doing well, partly because of multicultural businesses hiring and uh, developing people. So this is, you know, this is one of the last ones. They actually, Bank of America did a great job, and uh, partly because Latino business owners and Latinas, most of them are Latinas, by the way, are younger. Part of, the, part of it is the age, but social media is huge. It's a huge, uh, important part. And so where do you find them? You find them here on LinkedIn, on Pinterest, on Facebook, YouTube channels, Instagram. So you do find them there at a much higher rate than non-Hispanic business owners. Hispanic business owners, you know, talk about social media as being much more important to the business than non-Hispanic business owners. So much more, you want to hire a social media agency, hire a social media community manager for your organization. And uh, this is the uses of social media for marketing my business. This is comparing 49 versus 70 percent. This is non-Hispanic business owners. I like this one. 57 percent of Latinos do a lot of hiring via social media, only 23% of non-Latinos. But sharing up this with customers, networking, basically be social, highly social, highly mobile, and uh, you, will, you will really get closer to, to Latino affluence and Latino upscales, uh, especially in the, new, in the entrepreneurial sphere. Download this from uh, Simmons, no, from it's impossible to read. Nielsen, that's right. This is Nielsen. Brand new, great piece on Latinas, Latina 2.0. And so, just basically, the education is going through the roof. And Latinas today, Latina, Latinas females, are the top group in the country charting an educational path, completing uh, high school and going into college uh, nationwide. And uh, also, the number one group, starting businesses. Fe Hispanic female majority owned firms are growing a lot faster than Hispanic male majority firms and non-Hispanic. So there is a huge uh, explosion again uh, of, of, la of Latinos. U.S. Latinas, last year we had somebody here from the Santiago Solutions Group talk about the 12 or so areas in which a Latina millennial was different from a non-Latina millennial. And uh, this is one of them, uh, that uh, Latina millennials are much more catalysts of intercultural exchange. This is not just millennials, people of all ages, but 20%, over 20% of married Latinas are married to somebody who is not a Latino or Latina. And uh, we know many of them. Their last name usually is Peterson or mm -hmm. Stocks or something else. And so, we may not see them by the name, but uh, they are Latinas and no less. And when they have kids, guess what? Those kids identify as, oh yeah, I'm half and half, but yeah, I'm Latino. They cry. Race, white. Ethnicity, sure, Hispanic. And uh, increasingly, many of them are bilingual and bicultural, because that's a huge value. And uh, that's a whole, I have a whole presentation on transcreation and the cultural value of that. So. There we go. I think we jump. Good. Ah, Latinas, yes. Opinion leaders, influential and affluential. And that's a word that we want to remember, affluential, because the affluence, the concept of affluence, uh, this is the ambicultural, again, the ambicultural word. Ambicultural Latinas are the forefront of uh, crossover trend, the trends that cross over from one culture to another. And I think of myself, you know, I'm 
uh, in a situation where I'm in between Latin culture and, or lack of a better word, gringo culture, right? <laughs> and so there are gringo jokes in English, Latin jokes in Spanish. I laugh at both of them because they're all funny. Can't always translate them, you know? It's like you have to be there. But uh, many times we share things. I just, I hear something really cool in the Latino community. I read something in Spanish. And I share that with people who don't speak Spanish, speak only English, and vice versa. And uh, so these people, and I feel this way, my identity is not Latin American, it's not Argentine, and that's, that's a foreign country to me today. I grew up there, but uh, when I was a kid. So I enjoy it. When I go to Argentina, they say, where are you from? So I don't think I can speak like a local anywhere in the world today. <laughs> and uh, so I feel like I'm 200%. I'm 100% Latin, 100% American. That's my identity, Latino American. If I were a woman, I'd be Latina American. And uh, many millennials are bicultural, the bilennials. Many of these people are bilennials. Oh my lord, many millennials will say, oh yeah, I'm a 200 percenter. I go to work and people see me interact in English with all the you know, cultural norms of general European white American culture at work. They only see that part of me. But then I go home, my social life, I go to church, and many, many times it's all in Spanish, especially if you have kids. <coughs> There are people who live, live a life mostly in English. They get married and have kids. Oh, my kids need to be bilingual in my culture. And all of a sudden, your home becomes a Spanish-speaking home for the sake of the kids. So that's called retro-acculturation or reverse acculturation, and that's happening a lot with, uh, with uh, this uh, group, the millennials, who are leading the nation in household formation, having babies. We're in the middle of a baby boom right now. and. Uh, that's feeding the language and culture as well. Here's another concept, the affluencers. This is a classic marketing funnel. You go for quantity here and see how many make it and make the purchase. That's the sweet spot when they give us money and we give them something, product or service. And, and we do all kinds of things in between here. Sometimes we spend too much money here to get to that and we wonder, is it worth it? Well, we need to scale it and once we have enough, you know, have get enough people here, they'll justify all this investment. And with affluencers, you use a much finer approach, but the, the affluence, the, well, here we go. The halo effect, when you, you know, Latino affluence and Latino upscales tend to be very, but usually, usually, there's some examples, some exceptions. Bilingual, bicultural, and influ being good at influencing, being very hyper, hyper digital, and really influencing people. You say something and you have a lot more followers than average, and uh, people listen, and you, I may say, oh, I like, oh, that was so cool, I may look at that, look at this, man, I would like to, I may, I may, buy, I may buy that. I may not buy it, but you saw me on my feed, and you buy it. So this is a different, this is a, it's a totally new version of the consumer journey. So the halo effect. We're gonna have to have a few names. Yes, oh. yes. And then the multiplier effect, yeah, what time yeah, are yeah. <laughs> Okay, we, we got another hour. Yeah, yeah. And the multiplier effect, influence across cultures and generations. This is that's what it is. By the way, millennials, let's say they're 30 years old. They share it a generation up, they share it a generation down. So they are, they are, they are sharing things across cultures, across generations. And especially if it is a Latina or Latino married in you know, some of the different culture, you have an aromatic in your home uh, access to that. So, trends in luxury, and this is a huge one. Luxury, this is the BBC just last month, or this month. Luxury labels coming out of Africa. Pretty soon we'll see also more luxury labels coming out of, coming out of uh, Latin America. Uh, and uh, there's a whole influence of Afro-Latino also. And uh, people are much more conscious of, okay, what kind of luxury am I going to buy? Yes, I want that uh, Louis Vuitton purse, but I may also support and, and get some of these. these. These are becoming status symbols on their own because of the social meaning and their quality and they're great. So I'm going to quickly go through uh, Lexus. Yeah, <laughs> keep moving, keep moving. Okay. Keep the Lexus moving. No, 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 right. Because these are some of the numbers. Latinos, Latino, upscale Latinos are very bilingual, very bicultural, by choice. If you can, the question is, if you can afford to 
speak more than one language. To really do as much soccer as you want, you can buy season tickets, you can go see soccer. You do it. If you can afford it, you will do it. And, and people are doing that. The World Cup is coming up this summer. Huge opportunity to reach all Latinos, but especially upscale and uh, affluent Latinos. So wealthy Latin Americans is a niche. These are investor visas. Look at these numbers from 2008 to 2016. They are investing a lot of money. Latin Americans, Latin Americans coming in, foreign investors in general, but also from Mexico, from Venezuela, from Argentina, buying property in the US. It's a lot harder as a real estate uh, agent to, 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 to sell to those clients. You have to learn a lot of new things. But they're doing it, and they're buying all these all kinds of things, mostly in California, Texas, and Florida, but many other states. The list of uh, states where they buy them is about 20, where there's a significant amount of, uh, of purchases. A lot of them are cash. They are Latin American. They don't have a credit rating in the US. And so they will buy a half a million dollar home in cash. And that happens a lot. Many of them live in that place for half part of the year. Things get politically or whatever, the drug issues, the violence in Mexico, many of them have actually moved to the home here. And, uh, and the purpose of buying the home is a combination of a vacation home, but we, need, we want to be able to go there and kind of live there for a few months at a moment's notice. People are doing that. And that is an upscale market. The woodlandenses, woodland, woodlandenses in Houston, North, North Houston, Texas, are that. And this is a magazine. You can reach them through this magazine, for example. This is the uh, March issue, great uh, content. Tomorrow, this is tomorrow, Bon Jovi. Look at the price, I bet some of them will buy a $4,000 ticket. You know, the, the nice ones. Me pride in, me in Mexican and Latin culture. Big story about uh, uh, the Oscars. And of course, social pages. A lot of these people here are your target market. <laughs> if, uh, if you're looking for that. Lexus has a great example of, you know, some English, some Spanish, it's okay to do that on your website. Then a lot of Spanish, lujo, expandido, más que un auto, un sentimiento. Oh my gosh, I love that. See, I would buy that car just because of the headline. <laughs> Una auténtica visión, solo ve el futuro. No solo ve el futuro, lo cambia. Great vision doesn't just see the future, it changes it. Yes! <laughs> buy that car. So, Lexus, look at that, sofisticación absoluta. So, this is what Lexus has in the, on their website. Selección un modelo para configurar. Okay, click one and you can, you know, a partir de... So, which was the one I like? Uh, the one I like? Oh, I like that LC one. A partir de 92,000, starting at 92,000, okay? So, nice. So, they have a website that is fully bilingual for US Latinos. This is for the US. If you live somewhere else, you go to a different page. And this is serving and prices for the US. And not the whole page is 100%, but sales and service, marketing type, is in, is in Spanish. Many things, once you start navigating the page, things change to English. But that's fine, because that's where you get the emotions. You, you target the emotions with a bilingual website. They have a whole selection of uh, uh, videos uh, that, that they get deep into Latin and other multicultural co uh, cultural icons and, and artists. So the main thing here is to keep learning. Latin history for morons. John Leguizamo did this one-man show on Broadway. Uh, it wasn't to finish in January, he extended in December, extended it to January, he just closed. Maybe it'll open again and you should go to New York, unless he takes it on the road. I went to see him because I wanted to see it, and it was amazing. So, uh, Latin history for morons is basically a way to uncover many things that we don't know about Latin culture. Uh, and for Latin, you know, he did it in the context of his middle school son. It's like, I want him to be proud of being Latinos. We were in the Civil War. We were in all, we served in all the wars. We were most decorated soldiers in different wars, and we never hear that. So that's it. I was there. I took the class, and I learned a lot. Please uh, do keep in touch. Muchas gracias. And uh, Q&A, yes, until, until we get cut off.
about the coming up's coming, real quick. <laughs> yeah, the music, the music is coming. Yeah. Any questions? And like I said, I'm available to us afterwards. Rico, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, uh, the, the reason we're, that we're moving along quickly is we want to get out of here by one o'clock, as we told you. But first of all, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I think we learned a lot today. Thanks for all, how about a hand for our presenters? Enrico. Enrico's doing some high, high six figures, man. He's, he's doing well. He's buying after this, by the way. Say <laughs> ball, say ball girl. Yeah. But, um, Thanks to all our presenters again, and, and, and it looks like we have a busy summer, but just imagine here now, in one month, Seco the Mile, there'll be 75,000 Latinos here. So if you're thinking about being part of that Seco the Mile, it's not too late. There are there are booths available, um, and I think it's a great opportunity. We're gonna be around, we have a couple of uh, clients here. So we'll be here, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, and it's a well it's a well turnout, and, and a well-behaved audience is looking to stop at your booth and learn from you. So with that in mind, uh, our, our schedule is uh, August is, is our Latino marketing conference, a standalone. And then in the fall, we do our, uh, our 17th annual La Familia Expo. So we can actually give you the market. You'll be in a room with, uh, as an exhibitor with all these wonderful Latino people wanting to learn more about what you do and how we do it. So. On behalf of all our sponsors and everyone here at the Wildstone Center, I want to thank you, and we look forward to meeting with you again. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, in our newspaper, Latino American Today. Enrico, how about if we do this? Why don't we send an email to our folks here with some of those sites you have, some some of the ones that we need information. I think we'll do that for sure. Maybe five or six. Pick out the ones that are, that'll give them the most information. And those are the sites you want to keep, you know, like the Pew Research, a lot of great information you can download, man. I mean, it's all out there. The Pew Hispanic Center. Yeah, and, and our Carlos Santiago site, man, it, it's amazing. He, he gives, this guy gives you a lot of great information that you can keep and put right to use. It's like drinking of a park iPhone. Yeah, exactly. So again, uh, congratulations to your award. I'm looking forward to the steak at Manny's. Thank you. Um, and, uh, oh, and the best wine, baby. Yes. All right. So everybody, we love you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>